right class. This is our last ex assignment before summer, so it's pretty exciting. We, this um, assignment is going to be working on emphasis, which is an element of design. Um, so let's talk about what emphasis is. Okay, so emphasis is pretty much just the focal point, so the point of emphasis um, in an image. So in this image, the lemon, I think, or maybe it's a grapefruit, I don't know, is very much the emphasis for multiple reasons. It's in the center of the image, so anything in the center. It's bright yellow where everything else is muted, so our eye goes directly to the middle. Um, oh, it is a grapefruit. It says grapefruit. <laughs> um, I think that though this image works well, putting the emphasis right in the middle is not always the best choice because it can make a really boring composition. Um, but it, it works well in the sense that we know right away we're supposed to be looking at this grapefruit. Okay, so when we look at this image, it's an example of how you can make the emphasis uh, it doesn't have to be like the biggest, most centered object. When we look at this image, the emphasis is actually the turtle because of the way that Matisse directs her eye. So when we're looking at the people, they are all looking down at the turtle and then this person is feeding the turtle. So everything brings us back to the turtle. The emphasis doesn't have to be the thing we look at at the very, very, like right when we glance at it, like right when I glance at it, I see the woman in the center. Uh, but very, but as I look around, I realize that everything's bringing me back to the turtle and that means the turtle is the emphasis. There can be more than one focal point in a picture. Um, so a second focal point could be referred to as accent or a counterpoint. Um, and too many points can create confusion. So when you're making your image, I do want you to focus on one point, um, one focal point. A focal point is not the same as in perspective, um, where you have like a literal point that you're drawing to. A full, it's not an actual point. It's just where the emphasis is, the object or the area that creates the emphasis. If you look at this dolly picture, there's a lot of emphasis. There's the clocks, the ant, and this face clock thing. And um, Dolly wanted to create confusion. His paintings are weird and they, oh, they're, yeah, they're weird, dreamlike, uh, confusing images. So using lots of focal points kind of adds to that on purpose. Emphasis by contrast is a good way to create emphasis. So just having something that's very different from something else. So it could be value, color, scale, shape, or pattern in this area. The zebra has a very different pattern than the, the texture of the background and that creates a lot of emphasis. So we know right away that we need, we are meant to look at the zebra. Here's a, another, an abstract image. So very different, and but right away we know that oval egg shape in the center is what we should be looking at, and not just because it's in the center, but also because it's so very different than the background. Emphasis by isolation. So the doctor over here is the main emphasis, and then the secondary one is here. And we know that he's the emphasis because he's separated from the bigger group. He has a big light on him also. So it's important that the focal point does not lead the eye outside the picture frame without leading it back in. What that means is if you put so much emphasis on the, the area that's creating emphasis, the focal point, if you do that to the point where um, uh, it leads your eye off the image or it makes it so your eye doesn't move around the image, you could have a really boring picture. So this is a good example, right? So the emphasis is this area, the this dying person. And um, we look at it right away and then there's a sword going down, but it doesn't 
but there's another sword going up. So we kind of move like this, and then we kind of will also wander like this. And so the artist was smart to put multiple things pointing us back to the area while also letting our eye wander. Okay, so um, the one of the easiest ways to create emphasis is by placement, so putting it right in the middle. Um, so th this is actually really difficult to pull off. It's what we do automatically. It's what we do without really thinking. We put uh, what is most important to us in the middle, but it can feel like a very naive composition, a boring composition, not a very well thought out composition. So if we look at this image, Adam and Eve in the middle, the apple becomes the emphasis because they're holding it right in the center. There's so much going on with all the animals and the snake and the fruit uh, that it we were able to pull we were able to pull it off, or this artist was able to pull it off. But I also want you to be very, very conscious when you put something in the center because like when I teach drawing, I, so much of my job is talking to students. Like, I mean, there's a lot to my job, but one of the things I say over and over is don't start drawing right in the center of your image because you want to expand outward and you want your eye to roam. And right when it's in the center, it's hard to create space for your eye to move everywhere else. One good rule is to put it in the rule of thirds. So just stick the thing. So instead of like this cheetah, the artist could have moved their camera so the cheetah was right in the middle, but that wouldn't have been such a good composition. But having it off to the side gives our eye some space to kind of look around. And it's a much stronger composition for that. So if you have, if, if you choose an image where you're going to have one big object that becomes the emphasis, move it a little bit to the right or the left instead of right in the middle. Um, if, oh, back to this. If you want it in the center, it's best to have it vertical if it's a, if it's a long item. Um, if you have it horizontal and right in the center, there's a lot of extra space. So if you really want something in the center, I would say a vertical page usually works better for that. But it's best just to try to avoid it. Okay, so another thing that can create emphasis is perspective lines or any leading lines, any lines in the image that bring your eye back. So here, the whole edge of the wall bring your eye to this woman. So this is a really great example of how the emphasis is not right in our face. Um, it's not something we notice right away till we start looking and we realize she is the emphasis. Everything kind of, these lines bring us there, these lines bring us there, he's kind of pointing at her, she becomes the emphasis. Um, but it's, it's subtle. Emphasis doesn't always have to be really, really pronounced. Um, another thing is emphasis through one element. Again, I wouldn't suggest doing this. It works really good like for logos or anything else where you want a very clean or a very strong, clear message. And that's why it's used in advertising a lot, logos, things like that. For a more complicated art piece, it becomes pretty boring if you just have one um, clear message. A portrait, though, like a close-up portrait, you know, th that works well where you just have the face and the face is the emphasis. Okay, so... Min Maintaining unity with a focal point. This is really important because if your focal point is so demanding, like it, it you've done such a good job of creating emphasis, but you did too good of a job, and now the rest of the composition isn't interesting, or the nobody wants to look at it. That can create a lot of problems. So now you have emphasis, you have a focal point, you have an area you want us to look at but we don't want to look anywhere else and the rest of the painting isn't useful. Um, so that's, so you have to be really careful with that. And um, so make sure you're still creating unity. So in this image you'll see there's unity in a lot of ways. There's unity by the repetition of the lamp shape. There's unity that there's blue everywhere in the background. There's unity by the repetition of the shapes of the bodies, the hips, and the arm, these curved shapes. 
there's unity by this man's leg coming out, covering up her, um, kind of bringing us up and around. Um, there's, uh, but there's also this focal point of her and her yellow, her pretty much her yellow dress. Um, and so, but she's integrated, so we know she's the focal point, um, but it's not so in your face, and it doesn't, like, it, um, make it so the other parts aren't important to the painting. You want every part to be important to the painting. An absence of a focal point. So we're not, you're not going to do this, because I want you to practice making a focal point, but the absence of a focal point is when there's an all-over composition, or there's a there's, it's usually with abstract painting, um, where there is no, no focal point. Everything is equal in weight of importance. And so you can see in this Lee Krasner painting, um, there's marks all over the painting and all over here. And you can't, um, there's no one part that's more important than another part. Okay, so conceptual idea. So usually I um, do this project where you kind of decide that you make a painting about something about yourself that really makes you who you are. And it could be like cultural, it could be family, it could be a hobby, it could be friends, something that really makes who you are. This time around I'm going to change it a little bit. And so I want you to work your work to be specific on how you're getting through this pandemic. So it could be something that's was important all along but now feels more important or it could be about your fears and worries it could be it could so um and i want you to focus on yourself or your family and make this a very personal painting so this is not a painting that's kind of trying to capture the whole world and what it's going through it it's trying to capture what you're going through so either it could be something that's helping you get through everything or it could be something that is a, a negative or maybe it's something to show boredom or to show if you're very overworked right now, it could be showing how overworked you are or whatever. We're all having a very different experience based off our circumstances. So I want you to show me your experience um, in this painting. Um, so I'm going to show you some artists that they're, so I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to show the first group of artists or artists I always show and these are making work that are very personal to them and their, their, either their culture or their life. Um, but, and then the second group, I'm going to show you some work that was made in the Spanish flu. Um, but this one is kind of related to what we are living through, but very different. Um, so Felix Gonzalez Torres was an artist that lived in the 80s. And he was really inspired about from minimalist art. So minimalist art was very like a square box, a painting with a square on it, like a cube, just like an actual cube in a, a gallery. Um, very, very, very basic shapes. And, um, and they were really interested in like the space of a room and how to like kind of integrate the work into the building and how that created your um it transformed the space and the light and things like that minimalist art is a lot of times when people go oh i don't like modern art they're actually thinking of minimal art which is very small time period it's like 10 years um where it was really popular but that's what we think of when we think of uh, one of the thing, one of the couple things we think of when we think of modern art is minimal art. Um, personally, it's not my favorite at all, but I do really like Gonzalez Torres' work because, and one of the things I like about it is he takes the aesthetic of minimal art and makes it very, very human. And you only know how human it is till you know his story. So this is a like a carpet of candy. I'll show you some more candy ones. And he, so he, he was a gay man in the 80s and he was interested in, um, not interested, he was experiencing the AIDS epidemic because his boyfriend had AIDS and was, was dying. And 
uh, and then Gonzales also died of AIDS. So the weight of the candy is the weight of his partner. So it was the same amount of pounds. And what's interesting about it is if you looked at this and you walked into gallery and you saw this in, um, on the floor, you would assume you weren't allowed to take it. But his work wants you to interact with it. So you can take the candy. And um, it's it's almost like a ceremony. Of you're, you're watching the person waste away as people take the candy, um, which is uh, kind of heartbroken. And I don't think the children in this photo really understand. Um, but it... On a lighter note, it is kind of fun to, if you ever go to a museum and you see a pile of candy and you see his name on it. Well, I don't think there will be piles of candy by a different artist, but you see his name on it and you take the candy. The, they don't have a sign that says you take it. You kind of have to just know and, um, and to watch people around you kind of be horrified that you're taking candy. Um, it's kind of funny because um, they don't know the whole story of the art piece. Um, Okay, so here's another piece, um, and he did these billboards, and this one is a billboard of his fam, oh, not his family, sorry, um, of him and his partner's bed. So there, he's living in a time period where, the, where AIDS is killing lots of people, um, but also um, to be gay is not really uh, looked upon well. And so he is doing something that I think is very interesting. He's putting his life, his very, the most intimate part of his life, where they slept the night before, and he's putting that up on a billboard. And he's kind of making it public um, for everyone to see. Um, okay, so here's another artist. Uh, his name is uh, Mark Bradford. He's an L.A. artist. He lived in South Central L.A. And he got started when he was making his art. He would His mother owned a hair salon and he used the papers from the salon, the, the little hair, um, um, the, the papers for uh, perms. And he would use those um, in his collages. And his collages, not so you can see the little squares, I think some of those might be um, from the salon, but his collages are not paintings. So they look like paintings, they look like they have paint on them, but they are not. Everything is taken from his mom's salon and stuff from around his neighborhood, things that were on fences, like advertisements and things like that and he uh, glues them on and then he sands into the paintings and then um, and things like that. He also takes a lot of inspiration from the map or of the areas the area that he's from so maps and city street images. Um, this one is definitely one of his early ones from his mom's salon. So again like these his work doesn't really represent a focal point but I'm showing you to get give you an idea of like what you could come from. So he, what was really important to him was where he was from, his mom's salon, um, the, the neighborhood that he was from. And he wanted his artwork to really embed, be embedded with that. And he literally did by collaging those materials. So I want you to think about what's important to you right now in this time period. Um, and, and, and maybe... What is important to you is something you're missing. Um, um, or maybe it's also about survival. Maybe um, losing a job or something like that uh, could it is impacting you in such a negative way that you would make art about it. But I want you to kind of um, tell the story of who you are right now. So his story of who he was was related to working in his mom's salon and helping him his mom in the salon. Um, but who are you right now and what is is your life like right now? Um, so Anderson is a Jamaican artist. He also lives in the UK. Um, he makes um, like cityscape images. Some of them are cityscape images. So this one is 
a tennis court. We're looking through the fence, which is, I think, a very interesting viewpoint. Um, there is the fence is kind of blocking us. It's telling us we can't go in. It's empty. There's no people in it. Uh, here's another one. We're look, looking out through another different kind of fence, almost looking down like we're up higher. And looking, and the welcome is backwards, which I think is interesting, almost like we're not welcome. So he's putting up a barrier for us. Um, so he's illustrating the cityscape of Jamaica. Uh, and also he does a lot of uh, barbershop images because it's very, the barbershop is a very big part of the Jamaican culture and just it's a community space where people go and they talk to each other and it's where gossip is given and that kind of thing so it's an important space the one on the right with the blue this one is a great example of emphasis so the the, the figure is in the middle which shows emphasis but there's so much interesting things going on that we still look around the space Okay, so now I'm going to show you images of the Spanish flu. Um, so it's, it's very different pandemic. Most of us so far, hopefully, I know some of you have, but most of us don't know someone that has coronavirus. Um, and if you do, I um, send my love to you and your family and those that are affected. Um, but a lot of us are, it's like we're in a waiting zone waiting for it to get worse or waiting for it to get better. Um, where the Spanish flu at the, this point had destroyed a lot of people um, and almost everyone got it. So when we're looking at the, these images, they're pretty dark um, and you are welcome to make an, a dark image if that's, that's what you're feeling, um, but it's not a requirement. Um, so this one, Ed, Edward Monk, he's the guy that did the scream image. Um, uh, so this is a self-portrait after the Spanish flu. So it's after he got better from the Spanish flu, but he definitely looks like he had been through something. He looks um, like he looks like he came out the other end. Um, he looks shell shocked. There's a uh, there's like an emptiness in his face. Uh, also, it again it shows so much. So he used the rule of thirds. So instead of putting his portrait in the middle, he's used the rule of thirds. And but there's still very much emphasis on him. And then our eye, after looking at him, our eye kind of wanders around here in this U sideways U shape. All right. Um, Edgon Shiel, yeah, this is a pretty depressing image um, because it's the last one he painted. He died of the Spanish flu and so did his wife. And when he, um, when he, when he died, when he painted this painting, his wife was actually pregnant with his first child. And this was like a picture he was painting a picture of the future or his hopeful future, even though he knew there was this disease that could wipe them out. And what happened instead is his wife died while pregnant of the Spanish flu and so did he. So this is a pretty um, depressing and sad image. Uh, and then here's um, John Singer Sargent, the interior of a, span of a hospital tent. So, um, this is a little bit more removed. It's not such a personal image, um, but it kind of just shows uh, what's happening and um, how people were taken care of at the time. Okay, so I'm gonna show you student work now. Now, again, the students were living in a different time and the assignment was different. The assignment was to choose something that represented them um, or their culture um and so uh that's what and they had to use emphasis so you are also going to use emphasis and um but your assignments it's just a tad bit different uh so here i'm not even sure who this figurine is of 
but it's definitely the emphasis of the image. Um, this one, I don't, I have no idea what this is about, but it's a pile of bunnies, and that too becomes the emphasis. Um, this one represents family, so they're right in the center, but again, there's a lot going on on the sides to kind of keep our eye moving around, and it's the family that becomes important. Um, this one is a really good example of you don't have to have a lot of skills. So this class, we did learn a lot of skills, but if you haven't taken drawing or painting, you might not know how to paint realistically, and that's okay. You, you're going to have to figure out how to simplify your image to the way that you know how to draw. And so this student was not an art student, had never taken an art class, but she was still able to adapt this image to represent what she wanted to represent. And so again, the red bird and the heart here becomes the emphasis. Um, it's another example. He, he wanted to talk about how his sense of home was in his imagination. And so that's what he did there, which I thought worked out well. Um, Here's another one, she becomes, um, so you can see some of these use uh, materials that aren't paint, and that's okay. I do want it to be mostly painted, but if you want to collage or anything like that also, you can. So that's what she did with the swing. Um, this one was his animals, um, and so his cat and his dog became the emphasis, but there's again so much to look that kind of helps tell the story. Um, so this building here becomes the emphasis, and again, so much texture and things around to keep your eye moving. Okay, so this is the assignment make a design that has emphasis, a focal point in it. Make sure your design is unified and has variety. Make sure your design has balance. Make sure your design uses color harmony. Doesn't need to be a specific color harmony, but think about color and how it goes together. Don't just do random colors. Like learn what we learn about color, apply it. Um, so, and then the, the theme of the work is think a lot about how in you, you or and your family is getting through this hard time. Any to do any traditions that are helping? Is there hobbies or people getting you through this? Is there something that is important to you right now, um, but you can't do it? So something that you're missing? Um, is there a worry or a stress that's weighing you down? Any of these could be the topic. Uh, and then I, want, I just want you to be creative. I'm not going to post any process photos because this is the most open assignment we've had. You are going to really choose what you're painting, how you're painting it. If you're going to add collage elements or not, you don't have to do that. Um, that is the only thing that I'm asking of you really is there's some kind of emphasis and that you're showing that you understand what a good composition is, which is the basis of this class, and that you're using colors well which we've been doing um, ever since we've been online. So um, I'll have check-ins with you to make sure that the painting's coming along well, but I'm not going to post any process photos or videos because there's not really any one process that you need to use. You're going to use whatever processes we've learned in class. If you know some, a way of painting or making something that you you want to try that's not related to this class but it's still a good composition you can do that um, you can make the painting very flat you can try to create value you can create texture um, any of those things are appropriate so um, I instead of creating videos for you I'll just check in with you guys um, every day until the final all right I hope this helped and if you have any any questions please contact me all right, talk to you later. Bye.